السلام عليكم ورحمة الله. In this new video, I will discuss some examples of multiple choice questions of anti-hyperlidemic. And please don't forget to subscribe this channels to get all notifications about new videos for these examples to help you in studying pharmacology. Uh, here is the first question. Choose the correct and best answer. First question, say uh, the patient taking atorvastatin uh, libitor reports weakness and fatigue, pain in the shoulders and uh, aching joints. Then yes, initially assesses the patient for which conditions. Uh, the options are conditions and we will choose uh, the best one which is related to the signs or symptoms uh, listed in this question. The first option is rhabdomyolysis. Second option, renal failure. Third option, rheumatoid arthritis. And the fourth option is hepatic insufficiency. The answer is number one is rhabdomyolysis, which is a serious adverse effect of statin. Early signs include unexplained fatigue or muscle weakness, pain in joints or muscles, and an increase in creatine kinase level, as we know. While options two, three, and four are incorrect. The weakness, fatigue, and pain that the patient is experiencing are not symptoms of renal failure or hepatic insufficiency. Rheumatoid arthritis pain is often present but tends to be greatest in the mornings and associated with red hot swollen joints. Question number two. A patient is receiving cholesteramine questran for elevated low density lipoprotein levels. Which adverse effect should the nurse include in the care plan to monitor the patient? First option is orange colored urine. Second option, abdominal pain. Third option, sore throat and fever. The last option, decreased capillary refill. The best answer is number two, abdominal cramping. Because one of the most serious adverse effects of cholesteramine is obstruction of the GI tract, which causes that the patient suffer from abdominal cramping, while option 1, 3, and 4 are incorrect. Cholesteramine does not cause orange urine, sore throat, and fever, or affect capillary refill. Third question, the provider orders cholestibol, cholestate, in the combination with a torvastatin libitor for the patient, for a patient with elevated low density lipoprotein levels. The NIAS collaborates with the prescriber about which data related to the patient. First option, past history for peptic ulcer disease. Second option, recent myocardial infarction. Third option, the variety value of serum sodium of 136 milliequivalent per liter. And fourth option, allergies to food high in charamine. The correct answer for this question is, the answer is option number one. Because although there are few contraindications to using bile acid sequestrant such as cholesterol, they should be used cautiously in patients with GI disorders such as a peptic ulcer disease. While options 2, 3, and 4 are incorrect, myocardial infarction is not a contraindication for use of bile acid sequestrant Bile acid sequestrant agents don't affect serum sodium levels, and patients allergic to foods high in tyramine may be prescribed bile acid sequestrant. 
Question number four. Which assessment findings discovered by the NIAS would be an expected adverse effects associated with niacin therapy? This is vitamin B3. Select all that apply. First option, fever and chills. Second option, tense flushing and hot flashes. Three, tingling of the fingers and toes. And fourth option, dry mucous membrane. The correct answer, and hypoglycemia. I think the correct answer is option number two and option number three. Intense flushing and hot flashes occur in almost every patient who is taking niacin. Tingling of the extremities may also care, while option 1, 4, and 5 are incorrect. Neither fever and chills nor dry mucous membranes are associated adverse effects of niacin therapy. Niacin may cause an increase in fasting blood glucose, especially in people with diabetes. Question number 5. The community health nurse visits a patient who has been prescribed lovastatine, lovastatine, Mivacor. Which statement, if made by the patient, indicates that further teaching is necessary concerning this drug therapy? The first statement, I should try to maintain my body weight at an optimal level. Second statement, most patients with lipid disorders don't have any symptoms. Third statement, the best time for me to take this medication is before I go to bed. And fourth statement, I will take my drug with beverages that contain grapefruit juice. There's only one answer is true, and it is four, the final answer. Grapefruit juice inhibits the metabolism of statins, such as lovastatin, allowing them to reach high serum levels. While options 1, 2, and 3 are incorrect, most patients with lipid disorders are asymptomatic. A patient should be instructed that maintenance of optimal body weight will help reduce unhealthy lipid levels. Because cholesterol biosynthesis in the liver is higher at night, statins are usually best taken in the evening. Here is the last question, and I will not give uh, the answer, uh, but I will be pleasure if you comment uh, your answer. Uh, the question is, the NIOS is caring for a patient receiving gym for Brazil for hyperlipidemia. The NIOS would validate the order with the prescriber if the patient reported a history of which of the, the following. Select all that apply. Here we have five uh, options. First one is gallbladder disease. Second option is angina. Third option is hypertension. Fourth option is diabetes, and finally, renal disease. Uh, please try to comment uh, the answer and write your name. Finally, thank you, thanks. Thank you very much, thanks for watching, and please subscribe now to receive the notification about new videos. Thank you.